So I know all you guys want to pump huge damage, top the meters, and look really cool. But there's more than one way to impress your guild, and since the average guild is still progressing through World War hard modes, today we're going to go over some little known tips and tricks that can not only help you guys get these bosses on farm, but also look like a genius. I'm going to assume you already know the general mechanics of each fight, and you've probably watched some tips and tricks videos already, so these are going to be lesser known ones. Starting off with Flame Leviathan, almost all Siege Engine Gunners save the shield for whenever Flame Leviathan is actually hitting them. It also absorbs all elemental damage, and if you see the blue beams falling with lightning bolts coming out of them, you should just use it then because it deals a ton of nature damage and a huge effect, and odds are you're just never going to get hit by the boss. If the Hodier's Fury Ice Beam is following you, just stop for a second and let it lock on you. It will stop chasing you to drop the ice balls and you just move out of it. Make your most competent and experienced players drive the demolisher. They have the most agency in this fight. You can use interact with target keybinds to salvage the body of Flame Leviathan faster and make sure that you get it. I recommend something like Ald Mouse Wheel Up and Down. Ignis. If you're not already, get in the habit of only clearing half of the trash in this room. It'll save you a lot of time across the entire tier. And you can just put your tank in the water anyway. You can put ranged DPS under this ledge thing so they don't get knocked up. Razor Scale. Paladins Bob Caster DPS and Rogues Vanish to avoid the knockback. 50% health. If you want to get the dwarf achievement, you're going to have to wipe. There's not enough dwarves in the fight, only two spawn per wave. XT, the first hard mode. Stun and kill the gnomes in the XT trash packs, so that way they don't put up the shield. It's really annoying. When the adds come out during the tantrum, you don't have to AoE the adds. You can just kill the bomb bot, and the bomb bot will explode and kill the other ones. Tell DPS to save rocket boots for tantrum and a bomb going on them at the same time. Your cooldowns will reset right after this, so use them on the next trash pack to just blow it up really fast. Hold the Titan Keeper trash back into the previous room. They yell for help whenever they get low health. Iron Council hard mode. You can death grip and full stun the little dwarf at the start of the fight. Have melee DPS use a max melee range weak aura so they can min max the rune damage. Remind your mages to spell steal rune of shields from the rune master. Or if you're in a 10-man without a mage, make sure somebody's purging it. Everybody always forgets. Cola Graham. Everyone forgets this every week, but the Rumble adds despawn after the fight's over. It just takes them a while, so just heal the person that they're hitting, and don't actually kill them because they explode when they die, and you could kill somebody that way. Colgarn and his arms have the same hitbox, so just target an arm and face Colgarn. Cat Lady. The easy way to pull this boss is to just have everybody LOS and a hunter run over and throw a freezing arrow in her patrol path and then misdirect before she's about to walk into it and then she'll just go right to the tank. The ball that the Titan Keeper Trash summons is significantly slower than them so you can have one tank take both of them and cleave them down and then just move whenever they summon the ball. Hug the left side of the Hodier hallway to avoid unnecessary worm packs. The Ice Giant will always hit the most amount of people with the frontal stun. If you don't want to get stunned, stand by yourself. Hodier. Everyone knows that you can put up Curse of Elements before the fight, but you can also put up Curse of Doom and then wait one minute to pull the boss. Literally nobody knows this, but the falling ice can interrupt the NPCs and even prevent the mage from putting the fire down. Make sure that no one is standing close to any of the NPCs. Thorium man. This boss is really easy, but the dwarves in the hallway have like a 15 yard cleave range that'll one shot range DPS. If you've wiped to hold your hard mode in the past three weeks, don't do the mind control thing at all. It's not worth it. It just makes the fight way messier than it needs to be. If you want to be a gamer and you play one of the stupid classes that I play that have melee griefing mechanics like Demo Locks Metamorphosis, Trap Weaving Hunter, and Combat Rogues Killing Spree that can kill kill people from bouncing the chain lightning into other groups. Use this weak aura to see when chain lightning is on cooldown, so you know when you're good to use it. He pretty much casts it on cooldown every time. After Thorm, send somebody to do the Memoron trash skip so you don't have to do it. Freya. If you're progging on this, clear all the trash. If you've cleared it multiple weeks in a row, try and min-max the amount of trash that you clear. It's really annoying and it takes a lot of time. Make sure you face the green dragons away, and you can use the GTFO add-on to tell you whenever you're in a hurricane. The best way to handle the detonating lashers is the entrapment talent from hunters. You can also use Earthbind Totem, Frost Nova, Cone of Cold, Unglyft, Typhoon, or Blast Wave, or apply Crippling Poison to them with Fan of Knives. You can also pop army and the army ghouls will taunt them. There's a lot going on in this fight. Try and keep comms clear during progression and don't scream kill the roots when people are already killing the roots. Gnome Boy. People think this fight is all about fire management, and they're wrong. You don't need to be right next to a fire, inching it away when you're the only one even remotely close to it. It'll always go to the nearest target. This fight is all about fire placement. Keeping fire out of the center of the room makes the fight significantly easier, and focusing on kiting the fire is only really necessary when it's placed in the middle of the room. If you're progging firefighter and you see fire spawn right next to the melee and the tank drag it away, the fire will just chase the melee, get right next to the fire, and inch it back out into the range. Immediately when Mimiron throws the bombs on the ground, have your melee DPS find a gap that they can run through when the shock blast happens. In P3, you can use the engineering belt enchant to stun the bomb bots, or use pets to tank the explosion since they have avoidance, they won't take much damage. Guides don't really go over this, but you're not supposed to save the item from the assault bot to bring the head down during a time when the melee can hit the head. There will never be a good time for the melee to hit the head. You need to just bring it down right away, as long as the range DPS can get damage on it, it'll take 50 
percent more and it'll get you out of the phase faster meanwhile melee just stay on assault bots which death knights can kite with frost presence and icy touch spam lobster man visax if your guild isn't above average the meta is to pop lust on this first pack because it'll be back up by the time that you actually get to the boss when you get into the visax basement clear the packs right to left the faceless ones only start patrolling when you kill the pack that's to the left of them you still need to watch out for the patrol and recall your totems though your casters carry you through this fight and they should literally never cast without the shadow crash debuff since the hard mode animus takes four minutes to spawn if your dps is too fast you just get the boss to five percent and then stop warcraft logs will stop recording damage after that point and so your parse is safe for some reason nobody talks about this but the spooky debuff also lowers your attack speed by 20 percent this feels really bad for rogues yoggers yog one light is such a joke that lots of people consider it an easy mode if your tank sucks at picking up the ads have your hunter explosive shot them right away and then the tank taunts to steal all the threat if the plan fails, the hunter can always just feign death. If a player steps in a cloud more than five times, it's no accident, they're just bad. You need to remove them from the raid immediately. The clouds always go in a clockwise radius around Sarah, and so you can easily avoid them by moving up and down that radius instead of side to side. There's a safe spot under Sarah. In P2, if a paladin bops a player in a constricting tentacle, it immediately kills it. People who get the malady debuff will always move at some point in the malady. What usually chains malady isn't people just not moving, it's people accidentally moving in the same direction as the person with the malady. Consider standing still until the person with Malady moves in a direction, and then move in that opposite direction. In P2, you can kiss Sarah and get an achievement. Don't say this during the raid, though, or everybody's going to do it at once. Obviously, assign people to portals and tentacles, and when your Shaman lusts in the Brain Room, you can get it upstairs if you're just really close to Yogg. The Brain Room is directly under the center of the room. Even though Yogg spits out Brain Rumors to the front, it's better to go to the back, that way you don't get parries when DPSing the boss. Algaloni Baloney. There isn't much that you can do to make this fight easier, and there is a big learning curve. But what you can do is min-max the hour that you have to progress on him. Make sure everyone's the right spec, bring repair bots, DI mats, soul shards, and even bandages to heal players up so that way you can pull the boss faster. There are no teleporters anywhere close to this room, so you never want to run back. Focus on mastering the frequent mechanics first, like the extremely high tank damage and the cosmic smash. Once everybody's gotten used to that, it's just star death timings and big bangs to get used to from there. And that's it. I've probably forgotten a ton of stuff, but that's just what comes to my mind whenever I think of stuff that other people probably don't know. Feel free to leave your own tips in the comments, and maybe I'll make a part two or something later, so be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you guys for all the support. More great videos are on the way, and thanks for watching.